it's time to review another good slasher film. Prom Night... Wait, this isn't... This isn't a slasher film? It's a sequel to Prom... But it's not a slasher film. It's time to review another great possession film called Prom Night 2 Hello Mary Lou. Let's do this. Prom Night 2 stars Wendy Lyon, Michael Ironside, and is directed by Bruce Pittman. What's up, guys? So I reviewed Prom Night um, pretty recently. Was not planning on reviewing any of the sequels. But um, on Amazon Prime, you can actually watch uh, Prom Night 2 if you're an Amazon Prime member. So I did that. Um, I watched it twice, actually, because I actually enjoyed it, especially the second time. Um, so I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to review this one. Just because... I think there's a lot of interesting things to talk about, especially from a, a genre standpoint. Because, like I said in the intro, this is not really a, a traditional slasher movie like the first one was. Uh, this is more of a possession movie. And there's no heaven. And do you know what pissed me off the most? No fucking wings! As a matter of fact, this was originally based on a story called The Haunting of Hamilton High. And uh, this had nothing to do with the Prom Night series, but uh, the the studio owned the rights to both, so they said, hey, let's kill two birds with one stone, let's make this a Prom Night sequel, because it does involve the prom. But first off, before I dig deep into this review, let's uh, give a shout out to one of my longtime subscribers, actually, Maurice Boney. Uh, check him out in this t-shirt. He just got him a uh, Killer Flicks t-shirt, the, the Michael Myers inspired one, and it looks awesome. If you want a t-shirt, get one at the Drum Dumb store. But uh, just a huge shout out to Maurice. He's been a supporter of mine pretty much, I think, since my channel started. Like, pretty close to since my channel started. Been a really good friend. Uh, you know, he's just an awesome, awesome person. Loves horror immensely. His knowledge of horror is just insane. So, Maurice, it's been an honor, good sir. But first, let's get into the plot. This movie has nothing to do with the first prom night. It really could just stand on its own. But the movie opens up with a tragedy. 1957, uh, Mary Lou, who is our main killer of the movie, the, the woman who possesses our main character, Vicky, later, she's not a good girl at all. Uh, you know, she's pretty devious, and it's, it pretty much sets that up with a confession scene at the beginning of the movie. She's having a confession. She's stating that she did all these bad things, and she has no regrets whatsoever. You know, and then she writes for a good time call um, Mary Lou on, on the confessional wall, which is pretty damn ballsy. Many boys, many times. My child, these are great sins. You must prepare yourself for the consequences. Father, there is one more thing. What is it, my poor child? I loved every minute of it. But uh, fast forward to the dance, we're at the, the prom, and already she's cheating on her boyfriend who's there. So her boyfriend, who is the young Michael Ironside character, uh, you know, he gets pissed off. He wants to make her pay for it, play a joke on her, not like kill her or anything. But unfortunately, a, a horrible accident happens and he ends up burning her to death. So just before she dies, you know, she looks up and sees that it's him and just gives him this like ominous look. And that's not good for him. And he's going to be haunted with that for like the rest of his life. So she dies. Fast forward to 30 years later. I think this movie came out in 87. And then we're at present day Hamilton High. Our main character, Vicky, who is just, you know, your average uh, teenager, schoolgirl, you know, very innocent. You shut your fucking mouth, bitch. But she is responsible for releasing, I guess we could call her like a demon. I don't know if she'd be a demon, but... Releasing Mary Lou. That's what she does. She releases Mary Lou and it's not like abrupt. It's like pretty gradual actually We don't actually see Mary Lou in like human form until like the last third of the movie There's a one scene where there's this death that involves like the spirit of Mary Lou um, But yeah, like I said, you don't see her in human form until later One thing I really enjoyed about this movie is that it is a completely different genre than the first one most horror franchises, they're going to play it safe and they're going to keep doing that whole slasher thing, like, say, Friday the 13th or Halloween. This one said, you know what? Let's take our second movie and let's just make it a completely different genre. So I guess it was kind of a happy accident because they originally weren't planning on doing that. But it just makes uh, for a more interesting story, I think. 
because you know the first movie was pretty much tied up uh, alex was the killer and where do you go from there so this was kind of refreshing actually as a matter of fact this felt a lot like a nightmare on elm street uh in some scenes there are these scenes where vicky is having these hallucinations you know it's like mary is entering her subconscious and those hallucination scenes reminded me a lot of some of the nightmare scenes in the, the nightmare movies i almost expected freddy to enter the frame and there are some really cool scenes in this movie, uh, like the chalkboard scene, uh, where she's just standing in front of the chalkboard, and then all of a sudden, like these demon hands come out and pull her in, and then it looks like a whirlpool. And the scene looks like it was filmed for next to nothing, but it works. And I love when movies do that. You know, they're on a low budget, and they gotta make the most of what they can. And to me, it works, especially if it's real looking, if it's not CGI. Um, nothing against CGI, sometimes it works, but I think in this particular scene it worked great. And plus, back then there was no CGI. And just a sidestep a bit, this movie actually went through reshoots, and I just did a, a, a Halloween update on reshoots, and everybody was freaking out. And this is a perfect example of how reshoots can work. Uh, during the reshoots of this movie, they added the chalkboard scene. They added the locker room scene at the end with the shower and everything. Uh, you know, a lot of cool scenes were added in the reshoots. Before that, the movie just didn't work. It was kind of boring. So reshoots are not a bad thing, really, for the most part. Sometimes the, the story doesn't work, and they do what they can. The director actually went to Wes Craven himself, and uh, Craven told him, uh, scare the audience, give them a hard-on, and send them on their way. I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much what he, what he said, which is hilarious. But the locker room scene uh, at the end of the movie starts off with Mary Lou like completely naked walking into the shower with another girl and then you know she chases her throughout that scene and at the end just pretty much compresses her and you know says the bop bop baloo bop balop bam boom and then she like compresses her into the locker and it's pretty cool bop bop bam <laughs> But, you know, the big thing I loved about this movie was that it had balls, you know? It, it didn't, like, play it safe at all. This is definitely a hard R, especially in that, like, last act. It goes places that a direct-to-video movie might not venture into. Uh, but, you know, for a direct-to-video movie, I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Did not expect that. And I hear that Mary Lou is actually in the third movie as well, which I'm looking forward to checking out. As far as any cons, this does not have the production value of the first movie. The first movie looks like an A-level slasher. This one looks like a B-movie. It really does, all the way down to like the lighting. It's not the most beautiful movie to look at, but there are some interesting visuals in this movie, especially when you get into those hallucination scenes. Um, some interesting elements in those. But did not expect this. I would definitely give this movie like a high humdrum. It's almost a purchase worthy, actually. It's a really tough movie to find on Blu-ray, if it's even available on Blu-ray. But if it was, I'd buy it. I, I would definitely buy it. Speaking of Blu-ray, I actually went to Spooky Empire and I picked out this movie, Sorority House Massacre. I bought it on the cover alone. And I hear that this one's out of print as well. And I paid like 25 bucks for it. But, uh, you know, I, I'm a sucker for out of print, like B-movie horror. And this looks like it's going to be right up my alley. And huge shout out to Gabriel Lewis, who I just did a, an unbox for. He sent me this movie, Superstition. Uh, never even heard of this movie, but he said it's definitely worth checking out. And then April Fool's Day, which I seen April Fool's Day like way back in the day, but I don't remember it at all. So uh, looking forward to checking this one out again. And thank you, Gabriel Lewis. Awesome, awesome. And just a quick message to my patrons. Um, I have a few reviews that I have to get out. I owe you guys. So that's coming real soon. I have quite a list, like a long list of reviews I have to get to. And outside of the patrons i i get a lot of people saying why haven't you reviewed this yet you know i think people actually get mad at me sometimes because i won't review stuff like you know just to give you examples like night of the living dead i know drewski McGillicuddy, mcgillicuddy wants me to review that so bad it's coming i promise you matter of fact my next vhs review for will be for night of the living dead uh and he wants me to do in the mouth of madness which i'm going to get to that one too inception david king i know you want me to review inception love inception i will get to it um the Raid 2 uh, for Jason Hobbs, that's coming. So yeah, guys, I appreciate all the requests that you guys give me. All I ask is just be a little patient, okay? Because I have so many freaking reviews to get to. Uh, but I am not complaining. Just passed 13,000 subscribers, which I love that number, by the way. 
Uh, and my next video is going to be a top 13 uh, Friday the 13th kills. Looking forward to that. So anyway, guys, be sure to come over with Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day. And on Fridays, we do Free For All Fridays. Follow me at Drum Drums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and now Stardust. If you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and Drum Dumb out.